Thank you, merci. La première question, the first question is from David Youngren, Reuters. Please go ahead, your line is open. Yes, uh, good morning, Prime Minister. Um, is your government going to get involved in the bid by the Canadian firm Couchetard for France's car four? Uh, our role as a government is always to be there to support Canadian companies, uh, including as they look to expand around the world. Uh, I know that uh, discussions continue to be ongoing, and uh, I won't make any further comments on that. Follow up, Dave. Okay, because my next question was, do you, do you think the deal is dead, given the resistance in France? Uh, I had a conversation earlier this week with uh, President Macron in which uh, we talked about the need to work together on a broad range of things from COVID-19 to uh, economic opportunities for our citizens as we uh, engage uh, cooperatively in a global world. Uh, I continue to be confident uh, about uh, the ability of Canadian companies to succeed everywhere around the world uh, and we'll continue to work uh, uh, to ensure that that happens. Thank you. Next question, operator. Merci, thank you. The next question is from Lucas Mayer, News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Prime Minister. Uh, Prime Minister, you just kind of gave the uh, the green light, uh, if you will, on Ontario stay at home order, saying it's a type of tough measure that's in place. Uh, but I'm curious that with Ontario doing what it's doing, uh, Quebec going with the curfew and kind of different measures around the province, with the surge in the numbers that we just saw this morning, uh, are you considering it all as some sort of short-term or national approach or implementation a national uh, form of uh, you know restrictions and lockdowns? Or are you are you very confident that the provinces should just be in complete control of themselves? As we've seen from the beginning, uh, the course of this virus uh, is very different from one region to another. Uh, what is right for Nunavut may not be right for Prince Edward Island, may not be right for British Columbia. Uh, and that's why our role as a federal government is to be there to support the provinces and territories through the very difficult decisions they need to take. Uh, that's uh, been why we've been there to have Canadians' backs uh, on supports for small businesses, on supports for families, for seniors, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for students. We're going to continue to be there to support the provinces and make those incredibly difficult decisions around restrictions slightly easier by ensuring that everyone knows we have their backs. But again, because this is such a, uh, uh, a disease and a virus spread with uh, different uh, faces and different stories in different parts of the country, uh, we know the provinces are best suited to determine what is uh, the right path for them. Okay. Uh, Depuis les débuts, nous avons été... Since the very beginning, we have... Sure, on that, do you have any, for Ontario and Quebec specifically, because they're, you know, they, they're you know, right next door to each other and they have these, one has the curfew, one has the stay-at-home order. Are you concerned at all about just citizens, you know, looking across the border and, and seeing all of these different rules and, and, and any potential confusion, any frustration? that Canadians might have for those two provinces specifically? I think over the past 11 months, uh, Canadians have uh, uh, grown used to looking at uh, what their local public health office uh, rec uh, official recommendations are, uh, about understanding that uh, the course of the virus is different in different parts of the country and indeed in different parts of the world. We have learned lessons about uh, what works here, what, what doesn't work there, and uh, the public health officials in every region are making the best possible decisions they can that are suitable to their uh, their citizens. So, uh, yes, of course, we're going to uh, look at what other people are doing, but it's really important that everyone follow the local public health recommendations. Merci. Prochaine question. Open. Thank you. Merci. La question suivante est de Boris Proux, Le Devoir. La parole est à vous. Bonjour, Monsieur Le Devoir really discourage people concretely uh, is the federal government looking at measures that were imposed in other countries there are mandatory quarantines for example in new zealand and elsewhere upon return and or arrive on so on since march uh, answer since march we have had very strong measures such as quarantine quarantines with very uh, strict and high fines and there are measures that we enforce so 
for people who have to quarantine. Our recommendation continues to be not to travel. That is the best way to protect ourselves, to protect yourselves, the healthcare system, our healthcare workers, our seniors, and our families. People should not be traveling. In addition to the quarantine measures that we are currently strengthening, we have also added rules regarding uh, testing prior to returning to Canada. That is an additional measure to protect us, and we will continue to look at all the measures, both to discourage travel and to ensure that the current measures are the right ones to protect Canadians. From the very beginning, uh, we brought in extremely strong measures on a two-week quarantine that is stronger than most of our allies and has been extraordinarily effective over the past many months at uh, keeping Canadians safe from uh, international spread of the virus. But of course, we need to continue to strengthen those measures. We strengthen the quarantine uh, penalties and fines and the follow-ups to make sure that people are actually quarantining. We've also brought in new measures around uh, pre-boarding testing, uh, before people return to Canada as an extra measure, measure of safety. And of course, at the same time, we continue to tell people not to travel. We are actively discouraging uh, any form of international travel. That is the best way we're going to make sure we're keeping Canadians safe, not just from the virus, but from all the new variants we're beginning to see elsewhere around the world that we need to keep Canadians safe from. Uh, we're going to continue to work uh, to make sure uh, we're keeping Canadians safe with whatever measures necessary. Thanks, Philippe. And a follow-up question. We heard from the public health experts encouraging strong public health measures to combat the spike in new cases. I was asking if, if uh, during your meetings with the experts, as you mentioned earlier, if some expressed any preferences to uh, various measures, for example, Quebec's approach or Ontario's approach and so on. Answer, Dr. Tam and Dr. New continue to highlight the fact that what's important is to reduce contacts in our lives. Stay home, uh, have a curfew, limit travel, limit gatherings. All of those are measures that will lead to reducing contacts. Each person, each and every one of us should think about what we can do to reduce our contacts as much as possible. Obviously, we all need to follow local health measures. The goal to reduce contacts is one that is uh, there across the country. Uh, morning, Prime Minister Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, last time we were here, you said Canada in Q2 would receive uh, enough doses to vaccinate 20 million people. Later that day, uh, the procurement minister said Canada would receive 20 million doses. You know, those are not the same thing. Did, did you misspeak then? And, and if not, uh, are you still expecting to be able to vaccinate that many people and receive that many doses in Q2, given what we're hearing about Pfizer today? Uh, we've seen uh, the challenges that Pfizer's uh, facing, and it's uh, important that uh, Canadians be informed of uh, these challenges as they come up. But uh, as we've said, uh, it looks like it's only a delay. Uh, but, of course, uh, this is part of the reason why Canada uh, reached out to so many different potential vaccine manufacturers and secured a broad array of, uh, of uh, suppliers for vaccines uh, and secured uh, more doses per person than just about any other country. Uh, this is uh, a challenge, but we knew these types of challenges would happen with a, a, a global effort like this, and that's why uh, we've made sure to uh, ensure that uh, we have a, a very approach uh, because as always diversity is a good good uh, rule of thumb to, to follow uh, we know that uh, we're uh, looking to receive uh, more doses from uh, different companies as they get approved as well uh, this is all part of how we're going to ensure that all Canadians get vaccinated uh, before uh, before uh, by September uh, I think it's extremely important to highlight the fact and that Canadians understand the fact that yes, we are facing challenges in terms of the production and distribution of vaccines across the world, but that's something we could expect 
I mean, it's these are new massive vaccine production lines. It's normal that some companies will see challenges. That's why we ensured that we had agreements in place with many different drug makers and vaccine producers. And we have secured the most number of doses per capita of any other countries than any other countries. And we'll do everything we can to speed up the distribution of vaccines. And I can assure Canadians that we maintain are maintaining our target of vaccinating everybody who wishes to receive the vaccine by the end of September. Um, I wonder if you could explain to Canadians this. If there's too many kids on an outdoor rink, <clears throat> bylaw can issue them fines. If somebody gets in a car and drives to the land border because they want to go shopping at an outlet mall, they get turned back. But if you want to jump on a plane and go to an all-inclusive in Jamaica, go right ahead. Explain that to Canadians. Why is that still okay? Obviously, uh, there are uh, rules uh, in different parts of the country that apply differently. Uh, and different jurisdictions will uh, set up the rules that they think are best based on the best advice of their public health officials. Uh, on the federal side, we have uh, strongly discouraged non-essential international travel, including uh, by imposing uh, mandatory quarantines for anyone returning to Canada and now mandatory testing uh, for anyone uh, before they get on a plane to come back to Canada. These are measures that uh, are uh, limiting as we're seeing uh, the airlines uh, reduce their flights because people are understanding that uh, they are not supposed to travel right now. On top of that, with the concerns people are seeing around uh, different variants popping up around the world, uh, there is even more importance in keeping Canada safe from the arrival of, uh, of new strains of this virus. That's why we're going to continue uh, to ensure uh, that these measures at the border and on flights are uh, stringent and applied. Uh, and continue to discourage people from traveling. Hi, Prime Minister uh, Tom Perry, CBC. You, you talked in your remarks about possibly banning certain flights. I'm wondering if you can offer any more detail on that. Is it be to places where there's new strains, uh, where there's been outbreaks? And would you be open to the idea of a, a ban on travel, or would that withstand a charge challenge? Uh, as we said from the very beginning, uh, we will do whatever it takes to keep Canadians safe based on the best advice and the best recommendations of experts, uh, as we did uh, when uh, there was concern over uh, the Christmas holidays around the UK variant. Uh, we banned flights all right, uh, outright coming from the UK uh, while we could uh, bring in stronger measures around uh, pre-boarding testing. Uh, mandatory for anyone returning to this country. We will continue to look at uh, various variants, various geographies, uh, and uh, and make sure we're taking the right decisions and the right measures to keep Canadians safe. Uh, every step of the way, we're going to be informed uh, by the recommendations of, uh, of our experts and of uh, public health uh, doctors on how to ensure we're keeping Canadians as safe as we possibly can. A total ban, though, if you look at something like uh, We're always looking at uh, various measures as they are effective uh, elsewhere in the world. Uh, but, um, you know, so far the measures that we have taken in place, the extremely strong mandatory quarantine that's been in place since March and has been extraordinarily effective, even as we've seen uh, cases rise from, uh, from external transition throughout Europe and elsewhere, uh, our measures uh, have uh, been very strong, but we're always open to strengthening them as necessary. Uh, nous avons des mesures...